so pale. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you are uh, listening and watching. Can you move that back a little bit? Um, where my pros at? Just here on uh, Twitch.tv forward slash uh, Where My Pros Are. We very much appreciate you guys listening in today. Thank you very much. We are so sorry. Completely slipped our mind after having um, so many weeks of nothing, yeah. holiday nothing that, oh yeah, we do that thing on Wednesday. We realized like <laughs> half an hour after it started, we're like, we should have been live Wait like, half an second. hour Wait a second, what time is it? <laughs> so funny. Um, but I hope you guys had a great Christmas break and a lovely new year. Welcome to 2021, our first show of 2021. Yeah. Uh, and we are starting right out the gate with William March's The Bad Seed. Now, do you want to give a synopsis? No. Okay, I'll give a, I'll give a quick synopsis. So, um, this is a story that was written in the 1950s. It was adapted into a very acclaimed movie um, starring some people that I don't know. <laughs> but it basically follows, it follows a tale of a mother who is kind of living on her own with her daughter. Her, her husband's away for work. Um, Sorry, I'm very popular this evening. Uh, anyway, so she has an eight-year-old daughter, Rhonda, who is a psychopath. And it was a very shocking novel for the time period. Um, you know, 1950s aren't exactly known for their li liberal kind of thinking. So to have a... What's liberal about having a child kill people? To have, have an eight-year-old, <laughs> an eight-year-old girl, who's this kind of picture of picture-perfect childhood, uh, murdering and having these... As we now kind of understand a bit better these kind of uh, sociopathic and psychopathic tendencies. Um, now, I would love to know your. We, you know, we do that thing where we're like, oh, I want to talk about it, but we'll wait till the show. So I'd love to know. I know you didn't enjoy it, but I'd love to know why. Um, I think I gave it either two or three stars. I think I gave it two stars on Goodreads. Um, so I hope you guys have read this, and if not, um, I don't recommend it. <laughs> Uh, it's fine, right? It's just that on all the list of all the books that you could be reading, this is pretty far down the hundreds, if not thousands, deep, right? Um, and life is only so short. Um, right, so, first of all, let me just address what you said about the liberal thing, because I thought that was really interesting. Um, I, I, I see why this would be an interesting book, because that picturesque, you know, a uh, picture of innocence of like a seven-year-old girl or whatever in her perfect little dresses and her blonde curls and pigtails, pigtails and all this stuff, right? Um, being a murderer. Um, I mean, that's why I vote Democrat. I think there should be more uh, psychopathic children that are, that are girls as I well. Didn't I mean, mean politically <laughs> liberal, obviously, but a bit more kind of now that we have a better understanding of mental health and, and you know, and, and personality disorders, I would say, say in the 1950s where this – Brooke talks a lot about Freud and, you yes. know, it kind of tries to be this psychoanalyze it itself in a way. And um, what I, I, obviously, I didn't mean politically. I know liberal. that. I was being funny. It's called a joke. Oh, is that? Oh, oh he's being funny. So, it's funny um, when you have to explain the joke. <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah, I, I, I think that was a good thing at the time. Um, I want to point out that is fairly, like, in terms of uh, psychology, I'm not trained in psychology whatsoever. From what I do know, um, and maybe this is just purely from pop culture and I'm completely wrong, I might be, but I believe the people who are psychopaths don't tend to start out as murderers, right? They tend to start off like having tendencies towards hurting animals, realizing they don't really care and mind about doing so, and then they progress from there towards eventually hurting their friends and family or people or strangers, and eventually it becomes murder later on in life. Um, it's not usually the stage. But this is a piece of fiction, right? It's not supposed to be a realistic tome of, of what could happen with a child murderer. I don't think this is particularly common. There have been cases of children killing people, but usually, one, it's people their own age, and two, it's usually because they don't really know what they're doing. They don't really understand it. They just, like, they're trying to play in the pool and try to hide under the, the water or something silly, right? Like, it's not usually as direct as, I am a, so I am a psychopath and trying to kill people with a knife or... or fire or whatever. Well, the case of Mary Bell kind of comes to mind. I, I'm a true crime fanatic. You know more than I do, yeah. Uh, and I also, my parents were both uh, criminal justice professors, so this is kind of like, it's not exactly my wheelhouse because my degree's in English literature, but... Um, it kind know. of is your wheelhouse, I mean, considering that <laughs> those three things put together. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. All right, I'll fine, I'll take it. But, you know, and also there was, uh, there's, there's a lot of interesting cases about children who have murdered. I think the, probably the most interesting one was in New Zealand, I think it was. It was New Zealand. It was two girls who were best friends and... 
a little bit more than that, I think, uh, who murdered one of the girl's mothers. And uh, uh, actually, Peter Peter Jackson, um, the director of Lord of the Rings, did an excellent film on it. I think it was called All of Heaven's Creatures. If you guys ever come across it when you're, I think, um, on Netflix or whatever, it was um, Kate Winslet, a young Kate Winslet. Absolutely fantastic. How old were the girls in real life? The girls were, oh, they started this kind of weird relationship, I think, kind of early, mm-hmm. prepubescent, and then when they did do the murder, I think they were like 14, 15, maybe a little bit right. younger. Right, so children technically, but, but that's what I'm saying, But right. Mary Bell, who was, you know, from your from Scotland, she, I think she was about eight, actually. Oh, right. So, and she, it was a that's horrific an... murder that she, she oh, uh, wow. performed. Um, absolutely horrific, you know, this, this young boy, this young four-year-old. So it is other children, though, as well, I was saying, right? Yes, almost always other children, um, ex- uh-huh. except in certain cases uh, where it is, the, you know, usually a family member. Um, but we're, we're kind of digressing from the point. So Rhonda, <laughs> Rhonda, I think, was a very interesting take on this. I have to say, I enjoyed the book. I, I quite liked it. I wouldn't read it again. I really want to watch the film. Um, I did feel like William March, and I kind of read into him as a person as well. He's, he was a little bit of a... He was a weirdo. Um, I think he had some he had some issues with his identity, and they kind of stifled him and grew out kind of weird. Um, but anyway, I digress. I enjoyed the book. I wouldn't read it again. I thought it was a good... It was enjoyable, but I did feel like I heard the voice of the author too much. Like, mm-hmm. it didn't feel... Like, you said you felt like the characters weren't quite real, weren't quite realized, and I have to agree that they are kind of hollow. You could tell that William was trying to put this point through it, through, and you all right there, buddy? I was going to put this point through, and you could kind of hear him talking rather than the characters, and that just kind of takes you out of the story. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I do feel that the characters were very poorly shaped out. They were pretty one-dimensional, and they, they were clear for what their purpose was in the story, uh, every single character. Even the the psychopath girl, really only one-dimensional. There wasn't really much more to her than, than, than that. Um, and I don't like that in the story. I would argue, though, that that may be kind of more in keeping, though, if she's this psychopath or this sociopath that kind of mirrors others' behaviors. I think for her character to be kind of flat and kind of this creature that you don't quite understand is is acceptable but all the other characters felt very one-dimensional as well i understand it but i think the scariest thing about any murderer or somebody who commits atrocities of any kind is to find out that they are in fact human that's the scariest thing so when they have depth and they show compassion in other parts of life they show that they have loved ones they show that they have hobbies and interests that's the thing that's most jarring about murderers and learning about these people i think having a 2d character who is who is a murderer or a psychopath and that's all they're really known for, is less realistic. I completely disagree with you. I think that if you study serial killers and murderers and things like that, the thing that scares me the most is that they look they look like us. They are people. They are human. You know, we have all the same, you know, parts that make us up. And and I think that to, to have these kind of... I don't want to dehumanize anyone, but it does feel like they're a different species that look like us and can mimic us, and that, that scares me, rather than some complex anti-hero who murders people but also puts flowers on his mom's graves. Like, yeah, that, that's, there's a time and place for that, but not in this story. I didn't mean that their psychopathic tendencies need to be blended with human ones. I mean that they can have that as a purely hidden part of themselves and otherwise appear normal. Um, well, that's what she, she was doing, though. I think she was able to appear completely normal, you know, her parents thought she was a little weird, and all the neighbors absolutely adored her, but, well, you know, any time you got too close... I think that was her main weakness, is that she was trying too hard to appear normal, and often was she was confused by how society worked and why people felt certain ways. Mm-hmm. So she really struggled to, to cover that up, because she didn't realize why it was an upsetting thing to kill people. Like, I don't feel upset over killing that guy. Why would you be upset? That makes no sense. He was in my way, you know? I wanted what he had, or whatever. So, um... So in terms of the story, there were several instances where she murdered several people um, for different purposes. But generally speaking, they were fairly petty. Um, things that she was obsessed with that were important to her in her life. Like a little bobble or like the, a, a the bobble or me- an award, yeah, medal. Um, or just because somebody seemed to have some evidence on her but didn't really because the guy was known for winding people up in the neighborhood. Um, so she killed multiple people who just seemed to be in her way. And um, 
It was four, four people well, killed? Well, what she said to the mother, because she had a, a neighbor across the hall who used to babysit her, and she was like, I don't want you going over there anymore. And when she kind of starts to realize, and she's like, it's okay, Mom. She doesn't have anything that I want, so she's safe. Um, you know, I, I just, there were parts of this novel I think were really well written. Not to give too much away about my own background, but uh, my one of my biological parents is has sociopathic tendencies. And for me, it was quite... There was quite a lot where I was like, oh my God, like this kind of superficial charm that there's only a finite amount of it. So you can only spend so much time with this person before you start to see the cracks. Mm. But when the, you do start to see the cracks, like how did I never see them before? Um, Charisma and charm is absolutely a requirement of any, so any um, successful sociopath or psychopath. Yeah. Oh, and her poor puppy. Yeah. The one she pushed out the window. I, I, oof, oof. Yeah, this gets me. <laughs> there is animal death in this, just so you know. Um, I have to say as well, though, the ending. Uh, I, you know, the book itself was like it was okay, but the ending, I actually gasped out loud. Really? Mm-hmm. At what part? When I thought I thought Christine had wrapped it up neatly, I thought she had done like who. Like, if you're going to do what you do, you make sure that the little shit is dead before, you know, before you off yourself. So the mother uh, decides that the, the she asks a few people, what would you do in this uh, completely hypothetical situation in a story I'm writing? Which is, by the way, I, I, I see where she's coming from, but it is kind of a ridiculous reason to be able to bring it up. But whatever. I think, I think um, this, again, the author kind of like... Yeah. Yeah, so he's like, so she says, "Oh, uh, in this completely hypothetical situation, what would you do if your if a daughter that you had was killing lots of people? What would you do?" And they're like, "Well, obviously, the only thing you can do, you have to kill the daughter and then kill yourself. That's the only thing that's sensible. That's the only way to to finish that story." Um, and while I, while I agree, I didn't really like the build up to that. That was kind of ridiculous to me. I mean, um, I mean come on, like she did, was so Christine was such a wet squish, <laughs> you know. Oh, I don't want to bother my husband who's working away. I don't want. I don't want to, you know, bother him and interrupt his work, you know. So I'll just kill myself and the kid. Like, what are you doing, Chica? Send no. her. Send her away. Who cares about the society papers? Let your husband know what's going on. Tell him he needs to come home immediately and start locking your door at night. Well, she wrote all the letters she needed to to the guy and then put them in a drawer. <laughs> and then burn them. And then burn them. So yeah. when? They- well, it's because eventually she said that it would be less. Um, people, would be, society would be more sympathetic to the father if. It was a murder suicide of the the his wife and daughter. Than if it turns out that his daughter is a psychopath, then they'd all be just eliminated from society. So she wanted to sort of save her husband by doing that. Yeah, I know it's that whole society thing again. Where, in and there's a lot. I think even to this day, there's a lot of people who need help, who need to be sent away, who need a therapist, but their family members don't want to do that because it would make them look bad. Yes, and um, I mean that's just. I hope that we're going past that, you know, to having the stigma of going away somewhere. It's not a bad thing. If you break your leg, you you know, in a bad way, you need to go to the hospital. And it's the same with any other part it's of It's just body. as important with mental health, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I agree with, like, I, I get it when it comes to, like, you know, my child is depressed and I was brought up to believe the depression is not real. So we're going to just ignore the issue and tell them to buck up. That, I, I, don't, I don't agree with it, but I understand it. But the author, sorry, not the author, the main, the, the, the main character in this, the, the mother, saying, oh, well, my, do- my, my daughter has killed multiple people that I'm aware of. Mm. But what will, the na- what will the neighbors think? What will the neighbors say? I mean, I mean if man, you like... Put your, if you kind of put them on the shoes of a 1950s housewife, you do understand where she's coming from. But she from. cared less about killing her kid than she did about what the neighbors would think. Exactly. And what does that say? Who's the monster here? Is it Rhonda? Absolutely. Or is the bigger monster, monster society? Because we live in a society. <laughs> <laughs> Stop making memes on the show. Uh, <laughs> um, Cringe. So yeah, I, I I thought the ending was I understood it. I think it did make sense. Uh, it did. We did find out at the very end that the daughter survived the sleeping pill um, fiasco. Uh, fiasco. Yeah, the the whole whole container of sleeping pills that she's made to chartle down. Um, I mean, I, I get it, and I get that in the moment she's like, okay, that's all. Sorry, I'm going to kill myself now quickly to get over done with. Um, but she didn't even check. To and make the do- sure the little fecker wasn't breathing. Yeah, and the, yeah, and the daughter just woke up the next day, having a nice nap, and uh, yeah, nice continued long on. Nap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I feel refreshed. Yeah, so <laughs> gonna go murder some more people. She probably used um, cams because they're they're BS, right? They're not they're not legit. So yeah, Saint John's. Yeah, probably yeah, Saint John's Wart. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, melatonin. Um, hey, melatonin is a real drug. That's a real drug. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, so St. John's wort. Well, it's more of a... It's a herb. It's a woo-woo drug, I know. Yeah, but like, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it may help with certain things, whereas... <laughs> mel- has melatonin in it. Anyway, we're... Melatonin we're, we're, is we're, a we're, chemical. <laughs> we're, di- we're digressing. Um, so, I, if you guys haven't read it yet, I would... S- and you, you, you know what? There's nothing else on your shelf to read, and you're like, ah, I will. I, I need to read something. I would say go for it. It's, it's an easy book to read. It has a really, I think it's probably one of the best works of fiction that brings in the nature versus nurture um, conversation into my mind. I'm a big believer in nurture. I, I believe that nature kind of gives you the framework, and then nurture is everything else that goes on top of it. But that's not always the case. There's tons and tons of cases of people who have been born, you know, and they're they're in a happy, stable, you know, family. There's no issues, and yet they're still psychopathic little poops. Yeah, I don't think. Um, well, I know sociopathic tendencies can be can be caused through trauma and um, abuse. Mm-hmm. So if you go through some severe abuse, abuse yourself, you may have sociopathic tendencies. You still have the the capacity to have empathy, but you don't. But it may be harder to get to, or it may have been rubbed away somewhat. Um, but you still have it there. Um, psychopath seems to be again. I, I'm not. A she, I think psychiatrist. she was a psych- she was a psychopath. She was born she with was it. Not a sociopath. Yeah, she was born with it. Because empathy is something that we are born with, but it is also something that you know we have to practice and we have to you know encourage and expand. I just don't think she had any empathy at all. She had no no feelings for anyone other than herself and her, Mm -hmm. you know, very silly whims. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe she's a psychopath. (laughs) Oh, and I'm I'm not to meme. I'm not to meme. Sorry. (laughs) No, I think psychopathy is something you're born with. I think it's a genetic trait. And uh, that's explained through the story as well. The the, the secret heritage of the, the mother... Explains it as oh, well. Oh, that was ridiculous. That, yeah, you know, that was pretty ridiculous. Uh, that, you know, there's a lot of parts of the story where it was just so, like, the all oh, the Freud talk through the, you know, the, there's a rich neighbor who, you know, she's constantly quoting Freud and talking about penis envy, and it was really unnecessary. And I understand that that was, like, I don't know, shocking at the time. Oh, she said penis. Um, but Oh, yeah, that was a whole was, thing. Oh, there was the th- Freud stuff in general really irritated me. Because I know back in the 1950s, he hadn't really been put down by that point. Mm-hmm. But nowadays, unless you, you're unaware, um, Freud is generally seen as... He explored a lot of stuff, but he didn't Valuable really apply. To the fields, well, but, he didn't really apply scientific theory to his to his to his opinions. I think it's valuable anyway because you know it gave you a gave it gave us a foundation to build upon. I'm not saying or just right. or just strike down. I mean, like yeah, he believed that pretty much every single valuable. every single problem was because you wanted to kill your mother, kill your father, and have sex with your mother, or vice versa. I guess if you're the different gender or whatever sexuality or whatever. Yeah, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, and I have to. I think that's a good one. You know. I yeah. Know. Yeah. I don't know. I think that he, William March, it, apparently he was writing this novel for years and a lot of his friends thought that he was never going to complete it. Um, it did feel quite unfinished. It did feel quite <laughs> unfinished. I felt like he had this idea and, and, you know, there were moments where it really shone through and it was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Like there were definitely very interesting, intriguing moments, but just a blanket of banality. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's yeah. The part I've been holding off on is how boring the whole thing was. I feel like this whole story could have been done in 20 pages. Mm-hmm. It did not need to go on it for that long. It would have made a very sharp, vicious little yeah. short story. Absolutely. But the, the, it was just filled up with a name chatter from all the characters who, who who still somehow had no personality, by the way. They just they, they continually parsed on with their generic stuff about their one dimension. You know? Yeah. The one character who was really into psychiatry kept talking about psychiatry. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it... it it's it's a weird one. I, I I'd never read it before. Um, this was my suggestion because I am very interested in this kind of like stuff. So um, <laughs> I'm glad I read it because it's been on my list to read for ages. And I hear that the film is a lot better than the book. So I'm very much looking forward to watching the film. At some point, we're gonna watch. We're gonna like binge watch all of the films that we've covered the books of, and mm-hmm. we're gonna do some like maybe a sideshow, an extra show, or something reviewing those. And yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. Um, 
So I want to refer to the chat a little bit. Uh, Becca in the chat has been saying that um, they did that, that this is a play in high school, and she got to read the part of the little girl when uh, they did it for school. Uh, the class loved it when I read it. Uh, so well done. You're very good at being a, a psychotic child. Well probably done. <laughs> better. You probably did a better job than yeah. William March here. Yeah. So I would have loved to see that, Beck. Uh, Beck says, I'll have to check out the movie too. I've only seen it as a play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've not seen the play either. That's not a good point. Cause... No. So I had the audiobook. You had the written version. Yeah. It's all kind of... It, it arrived. It, it was brand new, but um, I think... I think it had a little little trouble arriving in, yeah, in the snow. Michigan snow. It Michigan has a bit snow. of trouble with the yeah. paper. That's going to get donated to the library, I think. <laughs> Poor library. I know. But well, hey, you know. So the audiobook version, uh, it was fine. I didn't feel like the, the author did any. Sorry, the narrator did anything particularly special that stuck out to me. I mean, I, admittedly, I read this two weeks ago, and I've read, I think, six or seven books since then. So the fact that it doesn't, I don't remember anything about the audiobook means it was probably just the guy reading. I really, I couldn't even tell you if it was male or female at this point, which also says uh, not very many good things about a narrator if I can't recall. <laughs> That's a shame because it does seem like a book that would lend itself very well to someone kind of giving it a little bit of life, a little bit of color, which is why I'm sure to... it was great as, a, as great as a play. And, you know, it's supposed to be excellent as a movie. So, um, yeah, but I'm glad that we're done with this one. <laughs> Yeah, I'm also glad it's over. Yeah. Next week, so actually before we, we do that, um, what would your rating be? Out of ten? Uh, five, let's do five. Out of five. Oh, I'm wavering. I don't know, a three? I was going to say two, but it, it does have some merit. It, that's why I give it a two. I don't think two means all bad. It means there's some merit, right? So like one star is the worst you can give it, I guess. So two is just above that. Yeah, it was fine. I like to think I could write better than that. I like to think that. I know I probably couldn't because I have no experience writing and so on. But, you know, reading that, it makes you think, wow, I could probably write if this is getting published. <laughs> right? oh, it's, a, it's a classic as well. It is, a, it is a classic. It, I think cause, just because the of era. how scandalous it was. Yeah. Um, and it's just funny because reading it in 2021, is we're just not scandalized by that kind of stuff anymore. Um, actually, speaking of, after we're done with this, I'm going to watch the Night Stalker documentary on Netflix, mm. which apparently is very graphic, and I'm excited about that. So next week we were going to be doing, we're not anymore, but we were going to be doing um, Toxfig's Almanac by Sandy Toxfig. Um, that was my, my choice. I've now read it, and while it's a very important book, and I do recommend you read it, it's not one that lends itself to discussion for half an hour, mm -hmm. um, unless we sat with it in front of us and went through each card, each uh, character, each person that is um, discussed. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, Toxvig writes about all these women throughout history, whose in, uh, lives, inventions, stories, uh, att attributions were given either to men or discarded. Um, so, and there, there's been many. There, I mean, she she barely touched on the, the that giant pile that is women's. Like, achievements through history mm -hmm. that has just been ignored mm -hmm. and she does a great job of covering some of them um, based on each calendar uh, day so she goes through january 1st january 2nd january 3rd and talks about the people who died on those days and what their contributions were through history mm. so it, it's quite interesting um but again it's non-fiction really difficult to talk about because there's no story or anything it's so, an almanac it's a, it's a calendar and yeah I, I kinda, yeah yeah it's an important read i, I didn't know what it was going to actually be like once you read it so uh i thought it'd be an interesting try but <laughs> we're skipping that we're not going to do it because i, I think that would are be are we going to do tough true one. grit is that the one that no. was up next on the list that's two weeks time that's in two weeks time sorry yes, true grit's in two weeks time right because um, I'm replacing my one. So we have a, we have we have to look forward to whatever Ken's gonna put forward. What, yes. Do you know what it is yet? Uh, we made a decision, didn't we? I, I can't recall what it was. I don't know. Uh, we'll I don't get... think we did. Uh... I think you just told me that we weren't gonna do toss fix. Okay. Um... Oh no, we did. We we're going to be covering Lolita next week. Oh. Yeah, we did discuss it. That's right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so Which Lolita. I'm so excited about because it's my favorite book. By. Vladimir Nabo. Nabokov. Oh, wow. Vladimir Nabokov. I, Russian name. Wow. With. We need to learn that for next week. Um, and we're covering Lolita. Nabokov? 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 I, okay, yeah. Well, I'll know it for next week, but it's my favorite book. Uh, don't let the subject matter. It is very dark. It's very dark and clocked up. Don't let it deter you if you have not already read it. It is one of the best instances of an unreliable narrator you will ever read. Um, it will leave you sick. It will leave you disgusted. But it will leave you with your head 
all a twirl and I've never had a book that's like reached me at such an emotional level before. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I've read it twice, um, once last year, once about 15 years ago. Um, and, you know, so once when I was in early, early teenage years, which I think is an actually, strangely enough, a really important time to read this. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is one that should be read in schools. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will disagree with that statement, but I, I, I'll explain why next week. I think mm. it's important. Oh, we're going to have a lot to talk about We're going to have a lot yeah. to talk about. I think um, I've read this probably about a lot. I've yeah. read it many, many times. I am not going to read it again. Twice is more than enough for a lifetime. Um, it's a very important book, but it's also a very hard one to read. Yes. Um, I recommend you read it if you are sensitive to the ideas of... Um, Pedophilia. Pedophilia, child molestation and sex. Sexual coercion. Cor drugs. Um, drugs, yeah. uh, And some violence, then it's yeah. not going to be the book for you. Um, plus, it's told from the, from the position of the pedophile who is consistently trying to paint himself as a very nice character. Oh, Humbert. So it's, it, it's a strange read because it's almost pro-pedo. Um, no, not, not legitimately. I don't it's, think the author was necessarily uh, trying to do that. I would very but. much disagree with that. He's trying... It is an entire book of someone trying to allow themselves to be this horrible monster and making up excuses for themselves and in the end finding that they can't... They have no excuse. But they still accept themselves. But they the still thing. accept themselves. Yeah. And that is just... I think that it's, 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 okay. it's something that, you know, is, it's an important thing to read and to understand and... To understand these people who are horrible, but yeah, I different, mean, and there's nothing wrong with somebody who has those urges and then seeks therapy and help, and you know, actually tries to prevent themselves and, and effectively stopping a future pedophile. That's a brilliant thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. But somebody who acts upon it, mm -hmm. that's different entirely. That's a whole different type of monster. It's someone who is losing their humanity. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it's. I think it's it is a tr it's like a transformation <laughs> of a of a human man to a monster. Graham's right. He says save it for next week, guys. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. it's yeah, too yeah. easy to talk about. It's just it's um, so good. <laughs> we will get onto that next week. It is a good read. Please go and read it beforehand. We highly recommend it. Um, yeah. And you know, it's uh, like I said, go in with some mental fortitude. You will you will probably need it. Yeah. Um, Take small water breaks. Go walk out outside. Pet a dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have been listening to Where My Pros At here on Twitch.tv forward slash Where My Pros At. You can check out all of our links to our Reddit, our Goodreads community, our Twitter, our Instagram, our Twitch, our YouTube page, and our partner show, which is uh, Show X, on uh, which is on every Sunday at two p.m. GMT, two p.m. EST, seven p.m. GMT. Uh, you can find all those links at www.linktree, which is with a, I'll, I'll put it in chat, um, <laughs> is linktree.com forward slash uh, where my uh, pros at. Um, and uh, there you can find everything you need to find about the show. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for coming to the catch up show with us. We're so sorry that we missed Wednesday, but next Wednesday, very much look forward to seeing you all here. Want to thank you guys so much for your engagement. Uh, we love doing this and we love doing this with you guys. You are an awesome audience and we really appreciate you. Uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. Thank okay. you. Bye guys.